and welcome to Mysterious North Carolina, a podcast where we will explore historical, natural, and supernatural phenomena in the state of North Carolina in which we have grown up. I am one of your hosts, Nathan, and I'm here with my two brothers. Howdy, I'm Justin, head researcher. And I'm Bennett. Welcome to our pilot episode where you will begin this journey with us through the many mysteries and many adventures. And Justin, what will our first uh, mystery topic be? It goes by many names. Catamount, Mountain Lion, Painter, Puma, Cougar. This cat is, is both fast, fierce, and beautiful. Mm. It, it, it used to be a very common sight throughout the eastern U, U, United States. Indeed, some of the first sightings of, of the mountain lion by um, European settlers was in the eastern United States. Um, however, due to habitat loss and hunting from, from, from humans, uh, the population of these cats has, de- has had decreased. And by, and by the early ni- 1900s, si- sightings of, uh, of mountain lions in the eastern U.S. was scarce. Officially, in 2011, the, uh, um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service declared the eastern cougar to be extinct. And officially, the only populations of mountain lions in the eastern United States are in the state of Florida, the Florida panther. However, many people have reported sightings of mountain lions all across the eastern United States and and in the state of North Carolina. Mm. It's a fascinating introduction there. We actually, as a special treat, this episode, we have a special guest with us who knows someone who has had up close interactions with um, the cougar, the eastern mountain lion. Hi, my name's Elena. Um, the closest I've gotten to a mountain lion, catamount, cougar, what you will, um, mm. may be closer than I'm even currently aware of. Mm. Um, in terms of my anecdote, uh, a friend of mine from college yeah. uh, was working as a wilderness guide. and um, This is near many, Boone, North Carolina? Yes, in Boone, North Carolina, um, near Appalachian State University, um, was planning another trip for her students. And I um, can't remember if she was in her tent or she just felt like she was being tracked. Um, but she was quite certain that she saw paw prints and heard the sound of a mountain lion. Mm. I'm sure your parents have asked you about, is the Eastern Cougar still alive in North Carolina? Mm. There's good reason to believe that that may be possible, and that is what we are here to investigate today. There's been many sightings, there's been mounting evidence, but there's still that suspension of disbelief of how, how could there be cougars? And why would we not have video evidence? Mm. So we have mounting beliefs on each side, like a raging tidal wave. And that's what we are here to dissolve. And- Definitely a sort of a, a flashpoint issue. Um, really cutting cutting you know, families against one another. Justin, could you have anything to add to that? Uh, mm. Yes. So I would say that uh, wild, wildlife officials have generally been very reluctant to admit the presence of mountain lions in states where they where they have been declared ex- extinct. Mm. Um, however, in December of 2001, after reviewing hundreds of reports spanning a quarter century, The Division of Wildlife Management in North Carolina admitted that cougars were returning to North Carolina. Mm. That's a breakthrough there. Yes. That's a breakthrough. Because before then, it was, you know, 
up until that point, you really were, you know, cast out as just sort of a crazy conspiracy theorist to, to entertain the idea of cougars existing in, in the Tar Heel state. Um, so that, that was a, a big, a big moment, uh, moment. Was that met with a lot of kind of derision and disdain from other kind of wildlife experts or, um, well, do we know kind of the back, more of the background there? Um, well, uh, honestly, it was kind of just forgotten about and, um, officially the cougar is still extinct in North Carolina. So, uh, they admitted it, but they didn't do any sort of follow up on it at all. We've spoken to many of the top researchers and experts in the field and <laughs> actually said is that the Eastern cougar has what many of them have actually said is that the eastern cougar has mutated and evolved to have black fur. And what this means is that a lot of people have had sightings of what they think is bears, but they say, why is it so skinny? Why is it so long? And a lot of researchers and experts, especially within academia, believe that it's actually the eastern cougar. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, so pr private researcher Charles Humphrey Jr., he is a member of the Eastern Cougar Network which is an organization dedicated to, uh, to documenting all reported sightings of the Eastern Cougar. Um, according to him, um, about half of the 500 sightings in North Carol Car Carolina. Now, th 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 this, is, this information is about uh, one or two decades old, so there have been more than 500 since then. Sure. But, but at that time, in his personal files, about half of his 500 sightings were of black panthers. Mmm, that is quite the revelation. We're going to take a quick break, and on the other side, a special guest, an expert on the cougar. The existence of melanistic uh, pumas has never been con confirmed. Um, Mm. However, there have been sightings of black cats in North America. Well, to be fair, people also report sightings of Bigfoot, which obviously is not real. At least not, you know, in the mainstream view, which is something I hold. I mean, I don't think Bigfoot is real, despite, you know, people reporting it. So... Debatable. Heavily debatable. Um... Uh, Justin, could you go on and what what are some of the most credible kind of accounts of of, of the spotting of the melanistic um, cougar, the uh, black the black panther? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um... well, so one, I I I, I mean, you know, I've seen you know footage, and you know, sometimes it'll turn out to be a black cat, and then you have issues, of course, with distance, you know, kind of scale and blurry footage and 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 whatnot. Um, so, but, you know, so a lot of this is taken just kind of, kind of from eyewitness accounts, um, you know. So the interesting thing here is that cougars actually still live in Florida and Texas. That has been confirmed. And f cougars used to live in North Carolina. So clearly we have this situation to where they live in somewhat close geographical areas and the geographical area of North Carolina is one in which they can live and they can thrive because there was a time in which that did happen. So right. we, we, there, there is a slimmer a possibility there, but from my view, wouldn't there be video? Wouldn't there be evidence? Now, I suppose the counterclaim to that would be that there's a small number and that's why they're elusive, right? Well, and I've even heard that some cougars possess, that this is out there, but I've, I've heard this from some sources kind of in more remote reaches but i mean potentially that that some possess invisibility i i believe what nathan is referring to is the uh cam is a camouflage that, that's correct uh, pumos did, I, did I not say ca i did i say invisibility i meant camouflage carry on that point yeah. yes well a ca camouflage can <laughs> appear to be invisibility but uh <laughs> yes uh, to the untrained and 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 sometimes inebriated eye and we're uh, trained. We're trained. Well. Well, some of us. Uh, well. Yeah, so. Um, Camouflage is not invisibility. 
Uh, Justin, here, let me get, grab your tissue. So... Justin's allergic to cougars and talking about cougars. Interestingly um, enough, there's actually been a movement going on, very grassroots, of people, hmm. whether it be through reports or other ways, people believing that there's actually a return of the cougar. For example, I looked up Eastern Cougar, and the first thing that came up in Google was North Carolina. Try that yourself, see what happens. So... I clicked on it, right? Doing research. Does, uh, does Google know your location? You don't know. <laughs> Anyways. I like so, Go on. So what came up was a news article mm. from, I believe, from Wrightsville Beach Magazine. And do you know what the title of that is? Is the Big Cat Extinct? Not according to reported local site sightings. And the article goes on to be strongly in favor of the return of the cougar, right? Because Ooh. this was an ecosystem where they once lived. And there's potential, whether it be through exotic pets that were released into the wild, or, or mountain lions um, making a journey and coming up, right? Right. So there, there's people that believe this. Now, I, yeah. I would say that I'm a very realistic person. I don't know. If, I mean, why would there be a cougar? That's my perspective of mm. if there's a cougar, I think we would have hard evidence. So I would say just on the face of it, we there probably are not. That's well, my well, view. Well, before we delve deeper into the kind of, you know, evidence, um, you know, do we, can we address sort of what some of, you know, potential biases could be in terms of the kind of camp against the cougar returning and for... You know what? What could what could be kind of sort of some kind of hidden agendas, or maybe not so hidden agendas. Um, uh, yes, carried well, into this conversation. It is well known that uh, pumas are known to attack live livestock, uh, similar to to the way that wolves uh, will attack livestock, mm -hmm. uh, and and some of these uh, accounts of mountain lions in the eastern U.S. have been associated with attacks on uh, sheep. Uh, goats, uh, alpacas, mm. and um, so we think it could incite a certain sort of you know, you know, panic that lead people to go out on hunting cougars. If yes. they think that there's some spread of of cougars back repopulating, yeah, you know, especially rural and farmlands. That that is a great point. And if people go out to hunt mountain lions, then that would um, that would severely halt their repopulation of 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 the state. And right. it is in the interest of the, um, of the wildlife uh, officials in North right. Carolina to um, have a population of predators in order to help keep the population of white-tailed deer down. That's a good point too. Well, that's and that's exactly. And you don't want open season. You know, people hunting on private land, shooting neighbors' cats. Th you know, I, I could very much see that becoming kind of. A widespread issue. Th those are great points, and we can look at it through those dual perspectives of who are the people that would report this and that would legitimize it, right? So these would be park rangers. However, who wants to be the park ranger that says, hey, I just saw a cougar, even though they're extinct here? No park ranger is going to want to... Discredit themselves. Is, yeah, discredit themselves. No one's going to want to come out as that. And you have to think of it from the other view. Even if they did have these park rangers say and come to their superiors and say, hey, I saw one. What are they going to do? Are they going to say, hey, tourists, hey, people that support our economy, there's wild cougars running around. Mm. Definitely don't be scared because that would incite a public public fear, right? Yeah, so, Widespread that, that, so that, there's, there's clear incentive to avoid talking about it. However, we do have with us park ranger Bobby Jameson, who is here and actually has been bold enough, brave enough to speak on um, uh, the, the sightings of the, the cougar in North Carolina. And he's here with us now. Hello, Bobby. Where? Hey, hey there. I was, uh, <laughs> I didn't know this was, oh, all right. All right. Well, um, I'm not being coerced or nothing. I came here in my own free, free, uh, free will. I just wanted to talk about the North Carolina, I mean the Eastern Cougar, but I've seen it in North uh, Carolina. I was I was a park ranger. Uh, I was on the job for about a, a couple couple days. All right, Bobby. All right. So <laughs> we want you to have 
give us a chronological recount of what occurred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, y- yes. Well, I, I want, when I started, see, I was still living in Grandma's basement, so I needed a job, any job, and I don't know why they let me in, but they did. And so I was in my first day on the job. I really wanted to impress, and uh, I was just walking through the forest, and uh, out of nowhere, I saw, I saw well, that's that's the biggest bobcat I've ever seen. Uh, but then I realized that there was no bobcat. Uh, I, I, man, I thought, could I be a wampus cat? Uh, no, it was not. A, it was no wampus cat. Uh, uh, um, okay, I'm sorry, Bobby. Could you um, could you get, get kind of get to the point, the actual details of the sighting of of the cougar in question? Well, yeah, sure. I well, uh, let's see. That's when I came up over the mountain, then, and I saw. I saw the cougar, and what struck me about it was that the eyes were glowing, almost as if there was uh, a, a, like a flame behind them. Uh, it, it wasn't quite quite orange; I, it almost almost like a blood crimson red. Uh, just a kind of, a, and it was staring right at me. It was, it, it, and you know that cougar, that cat, that that mountain cat looked madder, madder than a wet hen. It. It looked furious, and it started running at me, and that's when I, and that's when I fired off, fire, fired off around in my gun, and you know, frankly, I wasn't supposed to be be carrying, be carrying a firearm at that point um, in my tenure as park ranger, but I was. I didn't hit the cat. Goodness, goodness, no! Uh, I accidentally shot a shot an eagle out of the tree, and so I'm currently wait, 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 wait <laughs> currently what? wanted. I'm currently wanted for a federal crime. Uh, Bobby, so, Bobby, what? 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 Wait, wait, wait a minute! Uh, I have to go now, actually, boys. Oh, but what, I did what, see what, the, what I did is this about the, the orange eyes? No, eyes were crimson red. But I have to go, Bobby. I, I, I don't know if we believe I, that. I've got a friend trying to post bail for me for shooting that bald eagle. It was it's a mess. Uh, uh, thank you, boys. Uh, See ya. Oh, oh, there goes Bobby. He just he just walked out right out the room. Um, okay, well let's uh, carry on. That's our last guest for today. That, that uh, was a very startling. Uh, uh, what do we, what do we make of that? Because I yeah, I, I, I don't really mm. believe Bobby. I mean, I'll just say it right. Elephant in the room. I think Bobby's yeah. a little crazy. Uh, Bobby seemed off his rocker. Justin, any thoughts? Uh, well, I don't see any motive for him lying to us. Well, he's under a lot of stress right now. He could be trying to kind of float this sighting, you know, work it into. I, he doesn't, he, if I had to guess, he's not highly literate, but maybe push I it mean, into a book deal of some sort. Uh, it's theoretically possible. Uh, uh, on, uh, let's kind of get to some kind of wrap-up thoughts and kind of just, you know, uh, yeah, fi- final thoughts here. Um, Who would like to kick us off? Well, during my research for this episode, something I came across was a WBTV.com article. And in it, there are many people saying that they believe they've seen the cougar, uh, including, and this shouldn't surprise one of you, a, over a dozen people, supposedly, Morganton area believe that they've seen the cougar. However, mm. how do we know it's not a bobcat? They said it was huge and had a tail three feet long. It was not a bobcat, quote unquote. Indeed. Um, mm. According to the NC Wildlife Resources Commission, now th- this is an article on that same topic, but from the Charlotte Observer, they, they say that usually a sighting of a cougar is a house cat, bobcat, coyote, even dogs or black bears. Now, let's think about this. A house cat, mistaken for a cougar. There's a notable size difference, yep. right? Yep, I would say so, yeah. Okay. A bob, a bobcat. The tail is much, sh- much, much shorter. It's a gray color. Yeah, that- And most people know what a bobcat that's is. That's really, that's not consistent with the Morgan Morganton yeah. accounts. Of a three-foot tail. Now a ki- now a coyote. It does have a longer tail. Mm. However, it has pointed ears. A, a snout distinctly looks um, canine. And here's another thing. One of these witnesses on this article said, "Definitely a cougar. I've seen bobcats too, and they're not even close to the same size, length, and of course the tails are different. So this isn't someone that just saw." A bobcat, or at least a normal bobcat, and thought it was a cougar because they've seen bobcats. 
So that, I mean, that, that's pretty compelling. But at the same time, it seems a little out there. I mean, I don't really... I mean, well, I, I well mean, let's I, go I through the last... What was there? One, one more uh, commonly kind of mistaken identity animal there on that list? Uh, yes, there was a dog and black bear. Okay. Well, I mean, dog... I mean, what, what dog really looks similar enough to a cougar to be mistaken? I mean... For one... What breed of dog would that be? Uh, well, it would need to be tawny brown in color. I mean, pit bulls can get large, but... Okay, sure. But the tail, though, the tail's not that long. Uh, yes, and g- generally And the speaking, face shape, all of it. I mean, you'd well, have to, yeah. you know... Yeah, and then the uh, bear, you said. Yes, So bear. See a maybe a small black bear being mistaken for a, a black panther. Well, well here's another from question. From a distance. So, when we have this discussion, what are we counting as eastern um, cougars being in North Carolina? What do we count as their term? Is it, like, what, what is the bar? Is it just one? If, if there's mm-hmm. one cougar yes. in North Carolina, do we count that as a return and as yes or not? Like, what is the point? Is it one? Is it, mm-hmm. is it you know, a hundred? Like, what are we looking at? Well, yes. if, if there's at least one, it can't be truly extinct now. There were not, you need... How, what number would you need to really establish a sort of cons- con- consistent breeding population and like well a consistent breeding population well there's a certain amount of land that you need of course okay um in order for there to be a healthy population well the entire population of the florida panther at the moment is currently um now keep in mind the Florida panther is considered to be very endangered, and their um, population is low, but I believe the current estimate is about 230 of the Florida panther. Um, Now, in the 1970s, the population of Florida panthers was only at 20. Mm. So, um, now, there there has been some aid to the Florida panther population. I believe through introduction of uh, uh, pumas from Texas. Yeah. So let's just say you you need at least twenty in order to establish a in order to establish a population. In the sure. Of All right. Yeah, that's a fair rule of thumb. So yeah. twenty for the breeding population to be possible. However, this discussion truly is at its heart extinct or not. So. All you really need for to say it's not extinct is one, and that's much more possible than saying you know it's a, that lower, there's... a lower bar to clear for sure. Exactly. We've seen one of these accounts to be legitimate, and for the Mordenton case, I mean, having dozens of people claim it's true, I mean, there could be a single cougar in Mordenton. It's possible. Yes. I mean, yeah. it, it, it would I, be. I, I... Okay, realistically, what what's probably happened is. There's probably not a lot of them in the wild, but there is an actual possibility that there was a rich person, a famous person that decided to have an exotic pet, yes. got a cougar instead of a tiger, mm-hmm. and released it yeah. into That's some possible. forest. And that would be one, and that would technically mean it's not extinct, right? In, in, indeed, indeed. Um, now, if this uh, puma was raised by someone, then it would be more likely to be cited by someone because generally the behavior of these big cats, they do not like to be around people. They're very shy. Solitary um, animals. Yes. Right. Uh, they don't really travel in groups unless if it is a mother with cubs. And generally speaking, all of these sightings have been of a solitary cat. Right. Yeah. That, that's, that's a great point because realistically, why would a single, and not like a massive one, why would a single cougar or like a few cougars go up from Florida through Georgia all the way to North Carolina? Like that doesn't make very much sense. It's much more likely, as you said, that it could be someone that has an exotic pet that released it. And that would be very possible, right? I mean, we know, I mean, there are very strong evidence that people in the past in America that have money and that have overseas connections have done the exotic animal route and have these pets despite the legality of it. Mm-hmm. So, and, and are we going to say that all these people, people in Morganton don't know what a bobcat is? It's possible. 
or it's possible that one of these pets were released there. Now, I have an account that is going to shock you. In 2011, a cougar was run over by a car in Connecticut. And when they did uh, a test on its DNA to see which population it was from, because at first they thought it was a captive animal. However, they concluded that the cougar, which was killed in Connecticut, was a was from the wild, and it was from the Black Hills in South Dakota, mm. which would mean that that cougar traveled 1,500 miles until from the Black Hills to Connecticut to the point when it was run over by a car. So that is crazy. Yeah, that's so, a long trip to end up run over by a car. Uh, <laughs> and that does show, though, yeah. the the how far a cougar, even just one, yes. can travel to you know whatever find new hunting grounds. I, I wonder why. I wonder why it would go that far, especially into the cold where they don't really thrive. I mean, that that's strange. Right? Well, it's, well, it's going from cold to cold, North Dakota. I mean, yeah, man, South, uh, or South Dakota, Dakota, South Dakota, yeah. sorry, South Dakota to Connecticut. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, not the Outer Banks. So but that is a really strange journey, though. Like, what was its think, motive? Is it looking for new hunting grounds? Uh, well, yes, most likely. So, uh, given the um, protection and um, re-establishment of deer populations, which has occurred in the eastern United States. Um, the, this part of the country, um, and especially in the south, I mean, we have lots of deer here, is much more hospitable to, um, mountain lions moving back here and thriving here than it was a hundred years ago. Because a hundred year, years ago, uh, the hunt, the hunting was pretty much like not regulated. Like it used to be, like you hunt, you hunt a cougar, the government would reward you. Well, mm, well now it's definitely. like you shoot a cougar, I got like a ten thousand dollar fine. Right. Uh, I think through all this, we've seen just the profound impact that the human activity and expansion has had on the wildlife. the eastern cougar and wildlife in general, but specifically the eastern cougar and how you know. At a certain point, though, uh, an animal like the cougar is going to act in ways that seem strange to us, but it's it's all as a sort of a response to its environment. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Ben. And we're going to end this and close this with how we end all of our episodes. So what we have is a, a five possibility system, right? So we go from strongest to least strong possibilities that will break these mysteries on whether we believe they're true or not so at the strongest we have certain right we are certain that it's true then we have likely in the middle we have uncertain to somewhat possible somewhat possible and then fourth we have unlikely and then finally we have impossible Right, so ranging anywhere from impossible to certain, but then likelihoods, and then very down the middle. And then f- five is the most the was certain, with one being impossible. Correct. Yeah, correct. So five the most certain. Uh, yeah. Any. Uh, and right here, what we're really discussing for it to not be extinct is that there's just one, and and that's a low bar, right? I mean, obviously, I well, would say there's it, a very low chance that there's dozens. I think more than just. But I think to prove, not that there's just been one sighting, but that we think that currently there is at least some very small handful of cougar population in North Carolina Mm. right now. Yes. That's sort of, I think, what we're trying to put this on. Not just has there ever been a sighting in the last 20 years. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, is there one? Living currently. Yeah, one living currently. At least one. At least one or more. One or more. Cougars living currently. Um... Would you like to start, Bennett, with your final final verdict, having gone over the evidence and... Yeah. Yeah. We can go over this together, but I will say likely, but due only to the fact that the exotic animal trade is a very real thing, and what almost always happens in these cases is that people release into the wild. And based on the fact that that's a reality, and that we have these sightings, right? Dozens of people 
dozens of people are not going to come together and coordinate a hoax in this fashion. It's just not going to happen. And now it's possible, very possible even, that they saw a bobcat and they mistook it. But they said that they've seen bobcats before and this was most certainly not one. So we have the possibility that they're lying to us or it could be possibly from this exotic animal trait. So I will give it likely that there's only one. Or, so four, or, or just at least one. one. Yeah. At least because, one, so four, four out of five. But I will scale. But I will say... I, I don't think there's dozens of these running around. I think I think there's one, two, maybe three that are that have been imported that are not from here. But I will give it the likely, mm. so the four. I will, I will I will concur and give it the four out of five likely. However, I I certainly leave the possibility open, especially considering the Connecticut account of the of the cougar from from South Dakota that these could be uh, wild wild cougars that have have um, migrated hundreds or thousands of miles to find new new hunting grounds in the, you know, expansive wilderness that is the Smokies, that is uh, the National Forest in Western North Carolina. Um, so I'll also give it a four out of five. Uh, yes, uh, so my, vo- my, my verdict, I mean, considering that the coyote has traveled from out west and established its population in North Carolina, fulfilling the niche which was originally occupied by the Red Wolf. The niche that the mountain lion had um, can really mostly just be fulfilled by the mountain lion. So, uh, in turn, I would give this a four. I believe that most of these um, that most of the mountain lions that do make it to North Carolina are vagrants uh, coming most likely from Texas, possibly from from Flor- Florida. I don't believe that a breeding population has been established, at least in North Carolina yet. I think there may have been some further east than the current po- the, the current established easternmost breeding population other than Florida is in Nebraska. I, I believe that there may be some breeding populations being established in other parts of the Midwest, uh, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, those, those areas. So th- the reason I don't give this a five is, is because I don't think that a breeding population has been established in the state of North Carolina. So I have to give this one a four, but I do think that there are some uh, vagrant mountain lions that have gone into the state of North Carolina. Not, not, Not just in the mountains, but there have even been some compelling sightings in the eastern part mm. of part of the state, which a, has lots of wilderness. A unanimous okay. four for our inaugural episode. That's right. Wow. Well, um, four is all around, and uh, we'll definitely kind of touch on, touch back on this on this subject if we see any more interesting mm-hmm. developments. Yeah. Um, well, but for all of us, for myself, Nathan, and for Justin and Bennett, we are signing off on episode one the pilot episode of Mysterious North Carolina. We hope you enjoyed it and are looking forward to more mysteries. Uh, uh, Justin, a little tease for next next week. Ah, yes. Next week, we will be discussing the moon-eyed men of Appalachia. Until then.